Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for Learn Now Facts, and welcome back to another exciting fusion tutorial. So today we are going to be making this cool mystical energy shield, sort of Doctor Strange style inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I can, it's very hard to explain what it looks like, so might as well show it to you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my project settings here and I'm going to change this. Right now it's at my default of 4K and I want to change it to 1280 by 720. I'll change this as well. 24 frames a second. I'll change this also to 8 bits. So we just, uh, this is a very intensive project. So to be able to do this inside of DaVinci Resolve on my system, I'm going to have to make it a lower resolution, but you can make it 4K if you want, if your computer allows. So. I'm going to click on save. So here we are. I'm going to right click on the media pool and select new fusion composition. And I'm going to make this about 11 seconds long. Click on create. And I'm going to drag this fusion composition onto our timeline. I'm going to move the CTI a little bit forward, select the clip and head on over to the fusion tab. Now that we're in our Fusion tab, I'm going to take this media out mount and move it to the corner here, where it won't get in our way. And I'm going to right click anywhere on the grid and select Arrange Tools to Grid, make sure that's on. And Options, select Orthogonal Pipes instead of Direct Pipes. And I'm also going to right click here, turn off High Quality and turn on Auto Proxy. We're not going to be doing anything with Motion Blur at the moment. So I'm going to grab a background node. And I'm going to bring the alpha down. And for this tutorial, it's actually very simple. We aren't going to be using any images. It's all fusion, all procedural. So you can just open it up in the future, change a few things. And you won't have to load any PNGs or SVG or anything like that. But the only thing is you're going to be needing three fuses in order to follow this tutorial. And these fuses are free. You can get them on Reactor and they'll have uh, optional donation. But um, the three fuses are FUI Super Shape, FUI Circles, and MT X Glow. And uh, most of you are probably familiar by, with X Glow by now. I use it all the time in my tutorials. And those are the three fuses you're going to need. And once you install them from Reactor, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Reactor is a free plugin manager. It, ha it has a whole bunch of uh, fuses, it has a whole bunch of macros, scripts a few plugins and you access it like this workspace and you have scripts reactor open reactor but that's already after you install it so i'm going to search for fui super shape and that's already after you installed it from reactor so fui the fui tools are really really cool they're very nice they're definitely the top 10 out of the top 10, my favorite tools. And they're actually a lot easier to use in DaVinci Resolve than they were to use in Fusion 9. So that's one thing that I'm very thankful about. So I'm going to go to the actual Super Shape. So like show Super Shape. And I want to bring the scale down just a little bit. I'm going to go to the Super Shape style and I'm going to make it dash dot. You can make it dash dot dot but I'm going to leave it at that. If I zoom in, you'll see that it's dots and dashes. Now I'm going to go here to the show hide center shape. I'm going to show it. And shape A, I'm going to show it, show the shape A. And for the sides, I'm going to make four. That's nice. And I'm going to scale it a little bit. Just for it to be outside of the circle, like this. And the angle is very good. So far, so I'm just going to close this and center nodes. I want to just make sure that it doesn't come out of the frame, this whole shape. We want to make the whole thing smaller, the shape A and this, because I'll show you in a moment what we're going to be doing. I'll make this smaller and I'll make the super shape also smaller. Okay, that should be good. Now I'm going to go back here to the second tab. And I'm going to go to the center node, show center node. And I'm going to select node outline only. I'm going to give them some more sides and I'm going to bring up their size. 
just like that. You can bring it up a little bit higher, click on control and moving the slider will give you, the screw control will give you a little bit more fine definition. And I'll give it a few more sides like that, but maybe a little bit too much. I want to look a little bit jagged at the edges. Okay, so here's our initial shape. We're almost there. And I'm going to try to squeeze everything into one tutorial in case that doesn't work out. Um, this may be a two-part tutorial, but I'm pretty sure I can do this all in one tutorial. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to search for FUI circles. And they all need a background input, and that's why I made an alpha, so you can just merge them on top of each other without any problems. So here is our our circles. I'm going to go here, going to hide circles, going to go here to dash lines, I'm going to show dash lines, dash lines one, I'm going to show. And the line count, I'm going to make maybe 12, you can make it 14, depends what you want. And for the width, I'm going to set this to zero. We don't need this. And I'm going to show custom shape. And the shape type, I want to make it frames. And this custom selector, I want to go with five. So this is already looking pretty good. Now I'm going to get a transform node after this. And I'm going to merge it with the super shape. Put the merge somewhere here. Let's look at that in the viewer. And in the transform of the circles, I'm going to bring it down. Go to the center. Make sure this red center is on the point here. And now I'm going to make it smaller. Not too small. I want it to stick out a little bit from the edges, actually. And I can turn on high quality, but this will look a lot better if you're working in higher resolution, like 4K or at least full HD. So now I'm going to get another transform node. This is actually a little bit where the tricky thing happens. I'm going to also take the same input from here. See, it's the same input, but not going through the second transform. And I'm going to pipe it into the merge, to the, to the output, and it'll create another merge node. Now I'm going to drag this higher to our center position here. All right, and I'm going to make it smaller. I can make it the same size as this one. This is 0.5, so I'll make this one also 0.5. OK, that looks nice. Now I'm going to take a copy of these FUI circles, put one on top. And I'm going to also pipe in the background. And here, I'm going to go back to the dash line setting. And this custom frame selector, I'm going to change this to 7. So this changed a little bit. You also, you can try 6. 6 is different. And I think I can bring this line count maybe a little bit higher. So let's just see what we can do if I make this 15. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to make it an even number. I'll make it 16. Hmm, that's interesting. So what if I make it 13? All right, that looks good. So odd numbers will work a little bit different, I guess. So this, I'm going to go back. I'm going to set this to 7. All right, that looks nice. I'm going to add a transform node. So how about we just add two transform nodes, one here and one here. So we see you it, they both have the same input. So just trying to keep everything clean here. And I'm going to create another merge node, merge it with the output. If you drag the output of one node over the output of another, Fusion will automatically create a merge node. All right. So here's our pretty little shape. And I want to drag the center. Sorry. We drag the center using the transform node. Make sure that the merge node isn't selected because there's another trick I want to show you in just a second. I'm just going to move this here. I'm going to scale this down. All right. And with the second merge, I'm going to do the same thing. 
with the second transform. I'm gonna bring it here. Make sure the center is on this little, on the corner here. Nice fine tune it a little bit. And the auto proxy makes it look a little bit weird. So I'm gonna go here to this transform. Look at the size, it's 0 0.47. So I'm gonna make it here also. Type 0.47. And Fusion will automatically create the 0 for us. Almost there, one more FUI circle. So I'm just gonna paste. I still, I think I still have it copied from the beginning. So I'm just gonna pipe in the background now. And that's, you can see why I need to use orthogonal pipes. I'm gonna clean this all up in a second and it'll look a lot, a lot better. So this circle, I'm going to also add a transform node, send this to the viewer and go to the, here, go to the FUI circles, this, this third one. I'm gonna go to the dash lines and I'm going to select six. Number six looks pretty good. And I'm gonna bring the number to an odd number, 13. There it is. Now I'm going to merge this. It needs to be an odd number. It can be 15 or, no, no it's even more. It can be 15, it can be 13. So here is our shape and I think the size is doing pretty well. I can bring up the size a little bit more. And we're on, this is basically it. Now, this is the trick I want to show you after I clean all of this. So I'll bring the background here. All of the FUI circles should be in a row, the super shape and the circles. This one has two transforms. So I'll bring it like this. This one has two transforms. This one has one transform. And all of the murders would probably be in a row. Yeah, this is actually getting pretty confusing, but we aren't going to be playing with this anymore, so. All right. This looks less complicated. All right. So if you want this to rotate, if you have the computer power, you can get as many rotating elements as possible. So let's start with this one. I can go here, right click on the angle and select expression. And we aren't going to be doing any complicated expressions right now, just some simple ones. So I'm gonna type time. And as you can see, when I let it go and go to the frame zero, when you play it back, it starts spinning. Now the playback is one frame a second, but it spins actually a lot faster. I want it to spin in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna write minus time. And it starts spinning in the opposite direction. Now, if you want it to spin faster, you would type minus time times two. Now it spins twice as fast. If you want it to spin slower, it would be minus time times 0 0.5. That makes it spin half as fast. So you can make all of these spin in the same direction. You can make this one time, this one minus time. You can make them spin at different speeds, but I'm not going to be going through this right now. I don't want the whole thing spinning. Otherwise, I'll be, I'll be this before this tutorials even get started. So that's it for the super shape right now. And now I'm going to select this last merge node after all of this tree here. It's actually very confusing already. So I'm going to bring this background here. Yeah, so this goes to two, this one goes to two. And the merges just keep them together. They don't do anything else. They're not animated, they they don't change the size. That's why I did the transform node. Okay. So after this, I'm going to search for image plane. And I'm gonna make this 3D. I'm gonna zoom in here. Pretty nice. Now I'm going to search for duplicate 3D. All right, I'm gonna go to over to the duplicate. I'm gonna make three copies and I'm gonna contr hold control and give it a little bit of Z offset like this. And that's pretty nice. Now I'm also gonna make it the scale. I'll play with the scale a little bit. Make it maybe a little bit smaller. All right. 
and I'm gonna go to frame zero and I'm gonna animate the Z rotation and I'm gonna go to the last frame well the frame before the last frame because as I mentioned before in fusion frame zero counts as a whole frame and the last frame doesn't count so I'm going to bring the Z rotation up like this and it's gonna end something like this let me just look at it straight with the grids up, 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 up. there perfect all right that's pretty good now i'm going to search for a transform 3d And the problem is that if I start rotating it now, you'll see that the pivot is the front one. Now look, watch what happens when I start rotating it. It rotates around like this. We don't want this to happen. So I'm going to bring down the pivot options. I'm going to uncollapse those. Look at it like this. And the Z, we want to move it a little bit back. Not too far, not too far, right there. Bring the offset to negative 0 0.04. So I might want to bring this to a rounder number. All right. Now, when I try rotating it, I'm going to close the pivot now. When I try rotating it, it rotates around the middle. Okay. What we could do, we could type an expression here, but I actually wanted to, to start in a specific place and end in a specific place. So I'm just going to set a keyframe. And at the last frame, I'm going to bring it something like this. It'll make a full circle. Minus 360. All right. Go over to frame zero. You have zero. So it moves something like this. And I will play with the splines in just a moment. But I want to control S, save this. And one more thing is I'm going to grab a particle emitter from the toolbar. Particle renderer. What is this? What is this? This is a, no, P merge we don't need. And I'm going to grab a fast noise from the toolbar. I'm going to bring up the detail, turn up the seeth rate. You can make it discontinuous if you want. I'm going to go to the image here. And I'm going to make it 100 by, oh, uncheck auto resolution. I keep forgetting to do that. 100 by 100. All right, now I'm going to send this to the viewer. Here is our fast noise. And I'm going to add a rectangle mask to this. All right, and I'm going to make a nice and thin little amber-like shape. Okay, and I'm also going to bring up the scale in the transform. So that way you have a little bit more detail. You can bring up the soft edge of the mask a little bit. Okay, but now we have this universal shape and it isn't changing much. So what I want to do now is I want to copy this fast noise paste it here and I'm going to search for this place and I'm going to use the our ember as the input and this is going to be our refract uh, is there going to be displacement map and I'm going to bring up the refraction strength and I'm gonna bring the scale back bring up the contrast like this. As you can see, it's animated a little bit. And maybe I want to make the rectangle a bit shorter. That so doesn't get out of the edge of the frame. So here's our little amber. And it changes frame to frame, but it's going to be so small you won't notice it. But it gives a little bit of extra detail, this displacement. So I'm going to pipe the particle emitter into the particle renderer. And in the particle meter, I'm going to select region, going to select 
bitmap as the region and the region we want the output of this last merge node okay let's look at this in the viewer see we have this it looks like our shape so what I'm gonna do after that I'm gonna go to back to the particle emitter and I'm going to go to the style and I'm going to change it from point to bitmap as well and we automatically get another input for this particle emitter and I'm going to add this now, as you can see it's not pretty so I'm going to go to size controls I'm going to bring the size down a lot down bring down the number to like 2.5 we don't need many embers and rotation we'll leave the rotation just for a second and lifespan we want to bring this down lifespan varies bring it up number variance bring it up a little bit now let's try playing this now we need a little bit of um of direction so i'm gonna write e directional force okay and we're not going to be changing much it's going to be going down as you can see we want to look at only the particle meter and render not anything else that'll make the playback slower Control s save our work and i'm going to go here to the probability the conditions and i'm going to make it 0.2 maybe 0.23 all right now not all of the particles are going to be affected by the by the directional force i'm just going to randomly uncheck some of these sets you know randomly not not in a specific order just make them pretty pretty evenly distributed yeah something like this yeah so pretty evenly distributed so i'm going to look at the particle direction of force oh yeah you can only look at the particle render now i'm going to add p turbulence okay and i'm gonna bring up the x strength bring up the y strength bring up the z strength bring up the density strength over life i can bring it down a little bit play with this curve like that now i'm gonna go back to the particle emitter and go to the rotation you see this and i'm going to change this to rotation relative to motion and I'm going to uncheck always face camera. So now it's starting to look pretty cool already, like our sparks. Now, as I can see, there's still too many sparks. I think we can go back to the particle emitter to the number and change it to 1.7. We just don't need this many particles, so 1.7. Just give the particle render a second to figure out what he's doing okay so that should be a pretty pretty good amount of particles now what you can do is you can render this separately you can copy this i'm just going to show you how to do it but then i'm going to do it differently you can copy this this is actually the ideal way to do it but if you don't have the computer power i wouldn't advise doing it you can search for render 3d okay add that and after this transform you're also going to add a render and after that i'm going to write x glow and to this i'm also going to add one of those these are the one of the best fuses ever i use it in a lot of my projects made by brian ray very great fuse so let's look at our renderer and this is pretty small so what we can do we can add a camera camera and this camera is supposed to work i'm going to give it a little space here to create a merge 3d okay so i'm going to pipe the output of the camera over the output of the transform it'll create a merge now it's way too close so i'm going to go to the 3d viewer and I'm going to bring it back like this probably okay and I want to share this camera with the two render passes 
So I'm going to pipe the output of this camera over the output of this transform as well. I'm going to build the particle stack like this so we have them lined up, the transform with the transform, the duplicate with the duplicate, the merge with the merge, and the camera is going to be in the middle. Now let's look at the render of our particles. Here's what we have. Looks pretty good. We can turn off the checkered underlay so we can see it better. And we can send this to both viewers and then get rid of it. So let's look at this in the X glow. We have this nice little glow here. But what we can do, we can go to frame zero, go to the X glow, animate the gradient. We're going to set the color as white. Then we go a few frames forward, set this to red. Go a few frames forward, set this to yellow. I mean orange. Now we go, we can set it to whitish again. And so on and so on. We can change it back to red. We can change it now back to yellow. We can change this now back to red. And so on until you get to the to the end. White, like a pink sort of thing, back to orange. And this will give it a more realistic look of particles. That's one of the reasons that we actually changed this. That we're doing this in two render passes instead of rendering it together. Okay. Now let's go to the beginning and try playing our particles. Yeah. So the particles could go without the duplicate 3D. Or they can give a little bit of time offset. If you bring this up, it'll make your render a lot slower. So I'm just going to get rid of this. But alternatively, you could just bring up the time offset and that would fix everything. You can take this out as well. It just changes, changes how this looks. Yeah. So now we're going to look at our actual magic element, not the particles. And it's a very realistic glow. So I'm going to bring the color to about orange. There we are. I'm going to bring the gain just a little bit down, just a little bit, to make this look more realistic. OK, now we're going to merge these two together. And we have our particles going on. All right, so we can bring up the number of particles just by a little bit. We can go also here, see if it's enough particles. If it isn't, then we can bring up the number. Now the particle render takes a little bit of time to render because we added uh, we added quite a few things going on here. Okay, so if you consider this enough particles, that's fine. And if you want any more, I can write 2.2, maybe 2.3. That'll change it. It'll take a little bit longer to render now. But um, this looks pretty cool. I, I like how the result came out. And if you were to use higher resolution, this would look even better. Like I, the first render I made, I believe, was 4K. The one in the preview. And I'm just, for the sake of the tutorial, since I'm using Fusion that's inside the Vint Resolve, it's a lot slower than Fusion Standalone. That's what I used to render the preview. Okay, so it looks pretty cool. So if I want to add a fade animation to this, I can merge this, merge this last merge node with a background. Control T with the background selected, that'll change the foreground and background positions. 
go to frame 245, 243 will do too. Animate the blend. And at the last frame, probably another frame forward, you bring the blend down to zero. Now for the splines, I promised that we were going to play with the splines. I'm just going to don't select the particle tools. So I'm going to bring this over the whole screen and I'm going to click the fit button. We have this animation here, so I'm going to click shift S that makes it smooth. And this shift S smooth. This is the, this is the animation of the blend. And this is the animation of our transform 3d and our duplicate 3d and we're pretty much done you would connect this to the media out node go to probably a middle frame just to look at it and you can go to the edit tab and render this out you can go to the delivery tab and render this out and that's basically it it wasn't as hard as um, it wasn't as hard as it looks and it definitely didn't take two tutorials a two-part tutorial to finish it so if you like this tutorial, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever we release a new tutorial. Please share with your friends and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.